morning, good morning. Welcome to Heritage. It is graduation Sunday. Graduation Sunday here at Heritage Memorial Church. Are you proud of your seniors this morning? Yeah. Say, woo, congratulations. Well, our job as a church is not done when they graduate. Our job as a church is to continue to pray for each and every one of these seniors and their families as they embark on this next stage of their life. And seniors, to each and every one of you, no matter where life may take you, know that you always, you always, always have a home right here. You're always welcome back with open arms. So why don't we stand together and sing our praises this morning as we enter into this time of praise and worship.
there's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me.
for that this morning. that is found in your son, Jesus, who lived a perfect life, died a sinner's death. And through his resurrection, we can have a resurrected life, a resurrected hope, forgiveness of sins, an eternity with you and a, a, a purpose-filled, a joy-filled life here and now. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord, that is present here with us. 
who's moving amongst us this morning, who's in the hearts of every believer here this morning. Lord, I pray for the graduates that are represented here, Lord, that they will not lose sight of you. And Lord, I confess when I graduated and, and moved on to the next stage of life, I, I drifted, Lord, and I, I regret that. And Lord, I pray that these graduates here would not lose sight of a relationship with you because fast forward 10 years, 20 years from now, when they look back, they won't say, man, I regretted sticking with Jesus. No one ever says that because it's not true. God, we're thankful for that relationship we have in you. And Lord, we don't regret it a single day. Holy Spirit, have your way here this morning. Be with Pastor John as he brings the message. And Jesus, may you get all the glory. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Just before we receive the offering, if you grab your bulletin, turn it around and read some of the highlighted things that are coming up in the next week or so. Uh, the journey class coming up. We have absentee ballots for the, the church election at the welcome desk. Also, Memorial Day picnic was not yesterday. Hopefully everyone got the memo. It's going to be this Saturday and it's going to be from 5 to 7. Um, some of your bulletins say 5 to 7, some say 3 to 5. It'll be this Saturday, 5 to 7 Rose Avenue. Be there or be square. Also, men's outing will be next Saturday up out at Waters Farm, June 2nd. Actually, this Saturday, not next Saturday. So hopefully, guys, you can attend that. And I forgot. Welcome home. Welcome home. You, sounds like you guys forgot, too. Welcome home. All right. If you're here for the first time or the first time in a long time, we are glad that you're here. If you would, fill out a yellow welcome home card that should be in front of the pew in front of you or behind you, somewhere around you. If you would fill that out and turn it in at the Welcome Center, and you, there you'll receive a gift from us just to let you know that we do appreciate you being here. All right? Time for offering. This is our walk around. Thought by now I would get it His love for me is unmeasured Still feel like I could do better Was paralyzed by depression But heaven and earth came together <laughs> And you came to my rescue I used my voice as a weapon On earth like it's in heaven Yeah, I never handled things too well But I was made a fly, not too fail I don't need man to prove for when God sent me To bring heaven down for the kids going through hell yeah, we gon' make it I don't care what the world's been saying It's time to step up, not cave in The grace he gave us, amazing A love that could conquer the hatred But it's up to us, a new generation To show his love from the ends of the earth To the day he comes This is our Good morning. It's a privilege to stand before you this morning and the reality of getting a chance to uh, recognize our, our seniors this morning, our graduates, and I, I just maybe uh, can stand before you this morning and communicate from them to you as parents, grandparents, guardians, uh, Sunday school teachers, the church in general, uh, a if you're a neighbor, um, 
thank you for investing in them. And they have achieved what they've achieved because they've had this support group around them. And the cool thing is, is that we've gotten to be a part of that as a church. And we're thankful this morning for you guys being willing to be here. And we're going to take a few moments. And if there's something that you're going to tweet from this morning, here it is. What I'm going to give you this morning is not rocket science. All right? It is not rocket rocket science. But... If you apply this stuff to your life, you will have rocket-like power bestowed upon you from on high. And so as we approach the Word, I still have these things called readers. They're strange things to me, but as I've matured over the years, uh, things like this come up and try, don't let these be a distraction. These go on, they go up, they come off, etc., And I I still haven't been able to figure out exactly how to use them. But as we approach the Word of God this morning, we will find ourselves, and we will eventually find ourselves at Acts chapter 1. And and I've titled this, The Disciples Baccalaureate. Now, to my understanding, we locally do not have baccalaureate services. This would maybe be considered something similar to a baccalaureate service. And to just maybe give you a quick description of it, it would be something maybe of a moving or emotional experience for students, faculty, staff, church members, because normally those services are held at church. And when individuals attend these things, they just encourage the graduate, hey, slow down for a moment. Take a breather. Appreciate the fact of what is actually taking place in your life. And if there's an emotion or, emotion or two that goes along with that, um, I'm going to give you the right to go ahead and shed a tear. Um, cry if you need to. And, and we'll acknowledge that. So as we jump into this morning, prior to the scripture, allow me just to share just a few things. Back in 2014, Hong Kong, uh, political democracy was actually saved by yellow umbrellas. The government at the time was actually considered, considering proposals to change the whole electoral system of the country. And the young adults of the day were widely against these reforms. They were fearful of the future, especially of their country, deciding to do something different. And they chose to do something about it. So they arranged these very peaceful protests and sit-ins to display to the government that the people did not want these changes made to their democratic system. They were fearful of the creeping communistic mindset that was coming into their country. These protests actually overwhelmed law enforcement. And the highest numbers that they recorded were upwards of 100,000. And those sit-ins actually persisted over 77 days. Well, they purchased those yellow umbrellas actually first to be used as a shield against pepper spray. But eventually these umbrellas became the symbol of the movement. And the majority of these protesters were in their early 20s to late teens. Together, young adults and college students in Hong Kong took a stance on their political system. And again, that's maybe just one example of Uh, what people your age are capable of accomplishing. You've probably used something similar to this, either Facebook or Snapchat or Reddit or Dropbox or ModCloth. Did you know that all of these companies have something in common? They were all started by college-age students. Young, Young adults are very actively changing our world. They're saving democracy and they're starting companies. Many of you will be graduating later on this afternoon or you've been through your high school's graduation already. And I just encourage you, continue to make the contributions that you are making to society. But I guess we could probably arrive at, uh, in this whole process, uh, wondering where do we begin? And as your graduation approaches, you may be wondering, now what? Um, this actress who had a chance to uh, share something to graduates, she came along and she said this, Mindy Cowling said, what advice can I give you? She went on to say, celebrities give too much advice and people listen to it too much. 
Most of us have no education whatsoever. Who should be giving the advice and answering is people like you. You are better educated and you are going to go out into the world and people are going to listen to what you say, whether it's good or evil. And that probably scares you because some of you look really young. It's interesting that Bible scholars tell us that uh, those disciples that followed after Christ fell into this age group. They spent three years following the Savior around the world. They watched Him die. They saw Him resurrected. Spent a few more weeks with Him. And then they watched Him ascend into heaven. And I wonder at some point, were they now asking themselves, now what? And kind of this whole disciples transition into life without uh, kind of their spiritual training wheels, I think is what we're going to approach this morning. And so as graduates, again, I encourage you to continue to walk in the life that God has called you to walk in this next season of your life. Acts 1, 9 through 11 tells us this. He said, after saying this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. Uh, So what is scripture doing at this point? It's kind of painting for us this picture uh, that they're actually seeing Jesus ascend kind of in Uh, somewhat of a very majestic way into heaven. Um, It wasn't something that occurred previously. Now we've had those uh, circumstances in Scripture before where actually Elijah was caught up in this whirlwind thing and he ascended into heaven. Well, Jesus, and and I think probably the best way that I could picture it was, uh, when was the last time you got a chance to have access to a helium bloom? Not only when you have a helium balloon, uh, you want to release it or you want to hang on to it as long as you possibly can. But it's maybe if you can think back to one of those moments in your life where you, you had a chance to go outside and just release that balloon and you stood there and you stood there and you stood there and you just looked up as high as you could look and trying to follow that balloon until it disappeared. And then after you recognized that it disappeared, you probably just stood there a little longer going... Okay, it's gone now. Well, again, something similar took place and it gave the disciples an opportunity um, as Jesus closed out his time here on this earth. Um, They find themselves over these couple verses just in that moment where they were with Jesus and again, there was this majestic thing that took place and Jesus was just lifted up into the air and the scriptures just speak about how the clouds then kind of consumed him, kept them from seeing. So they saw him ascend, and he was no more. And I guess as we approach this, what's interesting is is that when they finally acknowledge that, all right, Jesus is gone, uh, somewhat maybe startled, now there's two angels standing among them. And again, we're reminded what they say. Men of Galilee, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you will the same way you saw him go. I don't know if it's kind of like one of those gunfires at the start of a race, but this was the closest experience the disciples had to what I would consider a graduation. Again, they didn't walk across the stage to receive some kind of degree, but this was the beginning of their next chapter. And again, for the disciples, three years they'd been preparing for this life without Jesus. The disciples had to take what they had learned and apply it now that they were out on their own. And as graduates, you're in the same spot. All of your education up to this point has been prepared for you for what is next. So again, I ask that question, so now what? Can we learn something in the reference to what happens 
from beyond this point. And I want to give you three things as we approach this. One being, and again, here's the things that we need to directly apply to our life. Jesus has empowered you to proclaim him everywhere you are. Let me say that again. Jesus has empowered you to proclaim him wherever you are. The very last thing that Jesus said here on this earth was Acts 1.8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The last thing that Jesus instructed his followers was to go. And the disciples took that seriously. And in fact, historical documents and tradition will lead us that uh, all but one of those disciples were actually killed violently because they followed Jesus' command to go and tell everyone the good news. Do we as followers likely see the need to spread the gospel, but in reality, do we actually do anything about it? Think about that. Do we actually recognize, yes, we see that God is calling us all to this, not just specifically the disciples? Graduates, you're walking in a fresh season of your life. Whether you are going into the workforce, the military, or continuing your education, you are getting a clean slate somewhere. You're starting over as an adult. And somewhat, you can actually be anything that you want to be. You can shake off these old generalizations or stereotypes about yourself and actually create something new and better for which to be known. You can start choosing to be known as a person that lives out your faith. A person that freely shares the good news that God has changed your life. And this is how the disciples lived. They took the command Jesus has given them in Acts 1-8 seriously. And we as his followers need to do the same. The late Charles Spurgeon said this, Every Christian is either a missionary or an imposter. Think about that. You're either someone who's choosing to follow after Christ and communicating that with the expression of your life, or you're just someone who's phony, someone who's a pretender. We all need to take this action very seriously. And again, what steps could you take to actually live out Jesus' command to spread the gospel? Number two, prayer is critical to discovering what's next. In Acts 1, verses 12 through 14, it says this, Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, a distance of half a mile. When they arrived, they, were, they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. They all met together and were constantly united in prayer, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women, and the brothers of Jesus. During the ten days between the ascension and until the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, Jesus' followers gathered together in the upstairs room in a home in Jerusalem. They prayed while they waited. They did not know what their next move was. So they gathered, they prayed, and they waited. Here's a question for you. Do you live out your life that prayer is your instinctive response to a lack of clarity? Often instead of praying, we, we face, uh, when faced with life with a difficult choice, uh, maybe there's some stress added to it, and what eventually happens is we just choose the option that we like best. Then we actually take what we've decided, and th then we go to prayer, asking God to bless basically what we've decided to do. We want God to validate, hey, here's the conclusion that I came to, God. Can you place your anointing on that? The disciples took a different approach. Again, this season of transition was an opportunity for God to speak very loudly 
into their lives what is next. Isaiah 58, 11 says this, The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. They trusted that God would guide them to what was next. How do we trust for his direction in our lives? How do you as graduates know that you're on the right path that God wants you to walk? And we read, I guess, in Matthew, it says in, in, verse, in chapter 10, verse 39, this comes out of the New Kings, but I, I have the message up there. He who finds his life will lose it. He who loses his life for my sake will find it. And this is how the message, if your first concern is to look after yourself, you'll never find yourself. But if you forget about yourself and look to me and me being Jesus, you'll both find yourself and me. Graduates, seek Jesus. Listen to him. Talk to him. And spend time in his word. If we are constantly looking for ways to align our lives with Jesus, we will remain on the path that he has for us. The journey might not be the prettiest or the Instagram worthiness. The disciples encountered some very harsh and brutal moments. But God was faithful, faithfully right by their side. And he will remain by yours. Share Jesus with others, one. Pray for God's direction, two. And then number three, you need a community of believers. You need a community of believers. Check out this video. Hey guys, I'm going to go defuse that...
Okay, BRB, guys. I'm gonna go defuse that. It's looping, so there you go. Batman and the Joker and all the rest of the Legos figured it out. They had to be together. They had to recognize each other within their community. Check out what happens when the church comes together. This is as we just kind of continue on in Acts. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over all them. And the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together in the temple each day. They met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. All the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Again, maybe let's just um, acknowledge the stages being set in this passage. 3,000 conversions at Pentecost. Jerusalem found themselves with this strong fellowship of believers. Jesus, in the flesh, had not been gone from the earth very long. And the majority of these, this group were, were young believers. They didn't know as much as they wished they could have known about him. But they were passionately living their lives in honor. They spent time with one, again, one another. They studied, they prayed together. They took communion and worship together. They even pulled all of their money and used their money. They sold what they had and took that money and provided for others. They treated one person's problem like the team was going to face and resolve that problem together. Boy, how the church should be doing what they're doing. Just like that first century church. Again, the disciples were thrust into an entirely new world when Jesus left. They looked to one another for support. And they invited everyone, everyone to come along on their journey with them. And we need to do, do the same. All of us need to, to belong to a strong community of believers. Graduates, you're going new places over the next few years. And wherever you land, I encourage you to find a place to worship, find a place to grow, find a place to belong. And it's already been mentioned in this service, and we want you to be reminded that you will always have a place here with us. Amen. This is your home, and you're going to find other homes along the way. Make sure you surround yourself with a community, community of believers. In Hebrews 10, it tells us, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. We need one another. We need to encourage people in their faith. And we need friends that can build up ours. And God did not design us to go through life alone. Now when I see you graduates, I'm, I'm going to label you as titans of community. You probably have more than one, if not two, three, four, five, or six apps on your phone. And you could jump on one of those apps right now and actually count the friends you interact with daily, probably on an hourly basis. Well, what's amazing...